Hey, y'all, what's going on? So, I, uh, if y'all heard one of our previous episodes, or you might be hearing this before that episode comes out, I did say I was going to do the Black Panther What Kind of Forever review um, during my whole trailer reaction thing that I, I'm putting out this week. But instead, I was like, you know what? It lasted 30 minutes. So I was like, you know what? Let me put it as a separate episode. It's a quick little episode. It's not even quick, it's 30 minutes. I break it down kind of decently. That way, it doesn't coincide with the other shit, the other tra- the trailer reaction stuff I was doing. But yeah, so this is just the intro to that essentially. But always and forever, one love, peace. All right, like I said, I'm gonna give my quick reaction or review to Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Eight out of ten. Loved it. Love it, love it. I, it. Obviously, I feel like the 10 was because Chadwick wasn't there. But in a way, he was there. From the beginning of when he passes to little sprinkles throughout the movie, you know he's there. In the sense of they're thinking about him. They say certain things or act certain ways the, the way that he would react. And obviously, at the end of the movie, which I'll get to that if I remember, they bring him, they do like a little montage. And in the beginning, it starts off with him dying. It's like, oh, he's dying. He's dying. I can't. and Shuri's like, I can't. I don't know how to save him. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to do everything I can to save him, and I can't save him. And Queen Mother pulls out like, your brother is dead. She's like, what? Your brother is dead. And then it just jumps a whole year later. And then obviously everybody's still mourning the loss of Chadwick slash T'Challa and stuff like that. So, but they all have to get on with their lives. They're saying Queen Mother, take care of this. And as the world now knows that um, T'Challa died, so now the World Council is trying to tell Wakanda they were supposed to help the world with uh, vibranium, take care of this and that, whatever. But in, then you see another scene, The basically the French, I'm, I'm going to call it on military, comes into a Wakandan outreach center essentially barrages all these Wakandan scientists to open its door to where the, uh, the the vibranium is. And when that happens, ooh, did they make a mistake? Because who's up? Who's in those doors once the doors open? The Dora Milaje, baby. Whipping ass with them spears. Like, damn, yo, these women don't play. These women don't play. If I saw... If I saw Somebody coming out of a dark room with a spear. First thing, a spear enough is scary as hell. But a, a very lovely look, looking woman with a spear and like a dope ass, um, I want to say, I want to say outfit uniform. And the way they move with that those spears, I, those women had to have trained a lot to do do those use those spears the way they do. I know probably most some of it's like. Um, stunt people, but for the most part, I think that's actually those women using those spears, which I think is awesome. But anyways, fast forward, the Dora Milaje brings in these military men into the World Council, like, courtroom, I guess, so to speak. And one Dora Milaje, Okoye, excuse me, starts speaking French. And then she looks at the, the World Council person from France. She's like, you're welcome. Or thank you, something like that. And then the World Council of Women's like, oh crap. They know we're trying to fucking steal from them. Shit. And then Queen Mother's like, yo, you pull up on us again. This is us being nice. You pull up on us again, you're gonna have a problem. So try try us again. Basically is what they said. Try us again. I'll see they go back home. You know, go through the secret portal thing that nobody knows about. They can't or can't see. They show Wakanda and like sunlight. It's not a full sunlight. It's like I don't know if it's sunrise or sunset, but it's just a little darker. Queen Mother comes out. She goes talk to Sherry. Like Sherry, I need you to come with me. But Mother, no, I, I got work to do. It's like Sherry, come with me. It's like, but you know, Queen Mother, you can't tell her no. You can, but you shouldn't. And then they end up in. S- they go do they want Queen Mother wants to do like a ritual that they do in their country <laughs> about birth 
put in the the white linen that's put on the casket, throw it into a fire to signify to finally signify that their person, whoever has died, has passed. And Shuri's like, no, I can't do that. Because once I do that, I'm going gonna, I, I'm gonna to not stop forgetting about them or I'm going to forget about them. And I can't do that. Next thing you know, oh, I did miss kind of into a part. Before the way, about five, two, three minutes before that. Um, us Americans were trying to go into the ground and, you know, find vibranium outside of Wakanda. And I guess they made a machine or stole a machine from a scientist, what we'll get to, and that can dic- dictate, di- detect vibranium on in sea level. And that happened. So th- they sent, the Americans sent down two people to recover vibranium, try to drill it through. Next thing you know, everything goes black. And like, what the heck? And the two people that were in the water just disappear. And what do you see? Just people just flying up off, just coming out of the water, just jumping on this huge ship. They're like, what the hell? At first, they start singing like they were being, um, they were trancing the people on the boat to jump off the boat, basically kill themselves. But then all these, um, we'll call them Atlanteans for now, jump on the boat and then start killing people, this and that, and they think it's the Wakandans. The American people, the American people think it's Wakandans, but then they realize, wait, Wakandans ain't blue though. These people are blue. So we don't know what these are. And they see, you know, whatever. Basically, everybody on the ship dies. Let's leave it at that. The one person that almost got away, the actress' name is Lake Bell. I don't know what the, her name was in, in the movie. Almost got away, got into a helicopter. Almost got away. And they see, you know, they got hooked by something. They get hooked by Namor. Flying in the air with his little feather wings on his leg, on his feet. And he just basically, and then he destroys the helicopter. Now, now everybody's dead. Now, let's fast forward. About another three minutes back to where we were. In the campfire with Sherry, with Queen Mother. Just before they're about to put the linens into the fire. They see something coming out of the water. Like, what the hell is that? They get their spears out. And they're like, it's Nemo coming out of the water. Like, oh, this beautiful air. This clean water. Oh, my goodness. It's so nice here. It's so low that you guys can keep yourselves sacred, like, away from everybody in the world. But then he explains what I just said about the Americans trying to go into the vibranium. They went to our territory, my home. To take something that technically belongs to us. And Queen Mother's like, no, my brain only stays inside of Wakanda. It's only been in Wakanda. It's never been outside of Wakanda. But then Shuri's like, what if there was another asteroid? What if this wasn't the only one? It's just one went straight to the ocean. Because Shuri being the scientist, she was like, that is a possibility. And then more basically just asking, we need Wakanda's help. To fight off all these people trying to get our vibranium. But kind of is the only place that can help us. And then he basically says he gives them an ultimatum. Either you help us. Or it's an act of war with Wakanda. And he's like basically I guarantee you. You will not win. I was like damn bro. He just straight up said you suck. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got a weird burp in my system. So then, Queen Mother and Sherry go back to the like the throne room, and they talk. But one thing Namor did is like, you cannot tell anybody about me. So they went to the throne room, and they kind of described what happened without saying who he, who Namor was. And, but the council at the throne room was like, the Wakandan council was like, what? You're crazy. Nobody could get in here. It's impossible to get in here. No one has ever been able to get in here. It's, it just makes no sense. But then they go on a mission. Okoye and um, Sherry were like, we need to go find the scientists. Wherever they are, we need to find them before the Americans or even Namor finds her and tries to kill her or something. 
Now, fast forward to Cambridge, Massachusetts. I forgot that they recorded a few scenes here in Massachusetts. We end up in MIT at a college student. Can you guess what the scientist was? Because they couldn't believe it, Okoye and Sherry. It was Ree Ree freaking Williams. Yep. Ironheart. Pre, obviously, Ironheart. Fast forward, she does make a suit. It's, it's like a... She has two suits, technically. She has like an exoskeleton of a suit that she uses to get away from cops in the movie. And she makes like her real first Iron Man esque type suit when they have like an actual war slash battle with the again for now the Atlanteans I know that's not what they call in the movie give me a sec please so but then they're like oh crap the the FBI is trying to go after Riri and now Okoye and Sherry gotta protect her but before they can even do that you got now I'm going to say their name. Listen, the people from Talocan come up, basically, water people, come up and like, yo, we need to take her or we're going to die trying. We're thinking, Akoi is a beast. If you know, you've seen the movie, Akoi is a, f- a monster. Like, she can fight. <coughs> he was beating down dudes left and right, but then all these dudes like transform. Like, like oh, wait, I can't kill these dudes. And then Akuma or Atuma, that name sounds familiar though for me. I need to look that up, who Atuma is in like lore. It's like, listen, listen girl, you can't fight me. You can't beat me. This spear I have is not even worth me stabbing you with. I'll just use your own. And then they fight, they fight it out. And yo, he, just dist- be said, he, he whooped their ass. And they even use um water grenades, which uh, my god, the the way they looked was so awesome, it was so dope. And that was gonna be a quick one, but I'm, I'm like almost breaking down most of the movie. Basically, fast forward a little bit, the Talokans take um Sherry because she said Sherry's like take me instead of her, take me instead of her, but they take both Riri and Sherry down to Talokan, which is in Me- basically Mexico. Underwater deep seas in Mexico. And then Sherry wakes up. Riri wakes up. Like, oh, um, Namor wants to meet, basically meet you, talk to you, stuff like that. And Namor basically swims Sherry around all of Thalogon and tells her what this place means to him, how his people got underwater. And, how, and then basically says how he got his name. And basically it was from a priest in Spanish who was like, you're a kid with no heart. You have no heart. You're a child with no heart. And basically, Namor was like, "Yo, that, that's how I got my name." They, they, I give the, I love the twist that they gave it. Namor. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, Namor. Amor in Spanish means love. Nah, basically, nah is like no. So Namor, no love. I thought it was so smart how they twist that around because initially, Namor is, I think, considered Roman. So, if you flip Namor back around, that's what it actually spells, is Roman. I love how they just twisted it like that to make it Latino. Namor. Instead of Namor. I prefer to say Namor. I think it sounds better, personally. Basically, and then he just keeps telling Sherry, I need Wakanda's help to just take over the world. These surface people don't deserve to live, essentially, is what Namor's saying. And Sherry's like, no, we can't do that. We just can't do that. It's not right. But then Namor's still like, think about it. Think about it. Then all this time, now, Queen Mother goes and visits, uh, God, I hate when I can't remember her freaking name. Nikita, Nakia, Nakia, in Haiti, which I didn't know she was in Haiti this whole time. But she's like, I fired Okoye because she couldn't keep my daughter safe. Now I need you to go save my daughter. And early in the movie, uh, Sherry made a suit called the Midnight Angel suit, which 
uh, Nakia actually wears to go and rescue Shuri and Riri from Thalogan. But Okoye never liked that. She was like, that's just disgusting. That's just ugly. Please get that away from me. I don't like it. Later, behold, she kind of has to use it. Um, And then Shur um, uh, Nakia, damn, saves Shuri and Riri. But Nakia had to kill a couple of Thalokanans to make sure she rescued Riri and Shuri. Like, ooh, ooh, that I'm already when I did the talk, I'm like, oh no, shit's a, we're about to have a war now. And um, Namor, Namor's like right hand person was like, oh, we just gonna stand here and do that, like, we need to attack, kind of thing. He's like, oh, we're going to, it's on now. <laughs> like, you know, we go back to Wakanda, and it's like, uh oh, ooh, they basically, Sherry's already told them, like, they're about to come for us. The kid killed their people. They're going to come for us and come for us hard. So basically, Shuri tries to develop a new flower, a new purple flower, I forgot what, the, what it was called again, to reactivate the Black Panther suit. But during that, she gave Riri like her own little space to create something to help them fight against Namor. I keep saying Namor. I want to say Namor, though, but Namor is like stuck in my head. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. That's what's up. Um, I was like, all right, cool. And I see, you know, just waves flood through uh, Wakanda, through their towns, their villages and stuff. I was like, wait, what? And everybody's realized, oh, shit, they're already here. Namor's in. And then the towns are flooded. Okoye, Nakia, Mbaku start coming in like, oh, yo. they start saving people left and right. You definitely see more of M'Baku now. I think because T'Challa, Chadwick is gone, you definitely got more of M'Baku, which I love. I'm, I'm a big fan of that person, that character, the actor himself. And it's, you know, um, M'Baku sees Namor. He's like, oh, that's him. Oh, I'm going after him. Then he goes after him, but dude, <laughs> M'Baku tries to hit him with a fucking spear. The only thing Namor did was put his arm up, spear broke on Namor's arm, Namor turned around straight, fist punched right to the chest, broke whatever armor M'Baku had and just, just murdered him, bro, murked him, straight worked him, made him fly, he was like, oh, shit, I was like, <laughs> M'Baku was like, yo, I'm good, I'm good, okay, he's like, oh, shoot, was like, M'Baku was like, oh, thank God I'm alive still, but... And essentially, Shuri, not done with the flower thing yet, comes with, um, I don't know who this person's name is, I don't remember them from the first movie. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Starts in a ship, starts shooting uh, Namor. Bow, 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 to, to knock him down. They kind of knock him down, but Namor still essentially took took down Shuri. But luckily, Okoye, and Baku and Nakia saved Shuri and this other, this other character. But also, while that was going on, Namor came with the... basically pulled up to, like, the throne room of Queen Mother. Just looked at her like, yo, you messed with the wrong dude. And Ryu was standing behind Queen Mother. And next, you know, Queen Mother's like, yo, run. Run away. Go. It's, you know, a flood, a tidal wave. I don't know what you would call it. Man, a monsoon. Let's say monsoon. Monsoon just came in right broke through the glass and just hit Queen Mother in the face. Just all that water splashed into her face and re ring Queen Mother. Basically, it was like a, it was like a weird, it's like a hole. It made a hole on the, under the ground and like the water started flushing out. But it was like filled with water though. But luckily Queen Mother was still alive enough to save um Riri. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know why this cough is again here. It wasn't here like for the last three days. But thing is though, Queen Mother died saving Riri. And that pissed Sherry off. It's like, no, you can't die, you can't. So they do the ritual again of 
you know, what they did with um, T'Challa. But it's that it was Queen Mother they did it this time too. And you know, um, Shuri just wants vengeance. So once she gets this flower, she does the make sure they do the ceremony thing. And you no, know, when you, you take the flower in liquid form, you go into the ancestral. You're supposed to go to an ancestral plane, and someone's supposed to pull up to you. That's supposed to like help you lead you on your journey. <laughs> to my surprise. It was fucking Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger. I did not, I did not know he was in this movie. I swear to goodness, like, oh, okay. But I think the reason, obviously, the reason why Killmonger pulled up because Shuri wanted revenge. She wanted to kill Namor. That's the only reason Killmonger pulled up. Because I guess if it wasn't for that, it would have been her mother. <laughs> And come on, yo, why do I pull up here? How come I'm here and not somebody else? Because you know what you He's like, you know what you want to do. You know what you're going to do. He's like, yeah, I'm going to kill him. I want to kill him. I don't care about no sacrifice. I want revenge. And that's basically the gist, for the most part, of Sherry versus Namor and the Talokans versus the Wakandans, like, so called battle. She straight up wanted to, she didn't care. And everybody's like, are you sure? Like, it's not what you like your mother would have wanted. It's not what your brother would have wanted. We can't just kill him. But Shuri, for the mo- at least for the f- like 10 minutes, that's all she wanted to do was kill him more. And I see, you know, you got Wakandans and like their battleship and Dalokandans in the water. They start attacking each other. Boom, boom, bow, bow. And then you got Okoye with the Midnight Angel suit and her friend pull up and just start whooping. I, those suits are kind of dope. From what I know what Midnight Angels are, are like a team of... Sp- Imagine Dora Milaje, but in space. I think that's the best way I can put it. But either way, while this whole battle's going on, Rivi also got, got her suit, very Iron Man-esque suit. Very bulky, though. I guarantee you, next time we see her, we're gonna definitely because she has her own show coming. We'll definitely see her suit way more like panned out, more suited to her, to her like Iron Man's, like Iron Tony Stark's was. And then you know what I'm saying, Ruby kind of helps Sherry capture Namor. They realize that if you take the water away from him, he basically just loses energy. He uses power. Water is his power. No water in the system. So they put him like this heat prison, so to speak. Capsule. I don't know what you want to call it. In, in uh, a ship. But then, next thing you know, Shuri starts to fight him and it opens the door. And he's kind of got it back because there's water and air. Or air and water, however you want to say that. And Shuri tells her AI, which I forgot, the Cleo, Creo, something like that, to fly to the desert. But before... They can just make it to the desert. Namor destroys the ship. So they both fall down. This is essentially like the main battle scene where both parties realize what has gone wrong. Or what they did. What they're doing is wrong. And stuff like that. It's, you know, Namor stabs Sherry. Like legit stabs her right, I won't say in the chest, more like in the abdomen area. He's like, oh, sure. I'm like, no, sure, he ain't dying, is she? I, did, I legit, I didn't know, I didn't see this movie. And Namor's like, all right, you're good. I think Namor assumed she was dead. He turned around, started walking to the woods, like, I need water. Starts walking, starts walking. And as Namor's walking, Shuri goes back, has a whole ancestral plane situation. I saw, it's not even now, I'm jumping a little bit. She starts thinking about her brother, I believe, if I'm correct. Like, you can't die. We don't die. Like, we're powerful. We don't die. This is not what we do. We fight to the end. And all that stuff. Next, you know, Shari freaking flips over Namor to block him from going into the water. And she starts whipping his butt, so to speak. And she did the she did the the cross the cross on the chest. And as you know, the ship behind Namor blew up, so his whole back was burnt. But at this time. Sherry got the, the spear. She was about to get him. 
But then that's when her mother pulled up in the astral plane, like, sure, show them who you are. Like, show them who you are. And she's like, and then she, she gets flashbacks comparing things that she saw in Wakanda to things she saw in Talocan. She was like, wait, we're basically the same. It's just different walks of life. Everything's the same. Just different forms, different ways of everybody living. Like, I can't kill you. I can't kill him. And next thing at the same time, it's uh, Namor seeing his mother being like, his mother smiling at him like, you can't do this. And Shuri's telling him, just like you remember in the first Black Panther when, um, and Baku and um, T'Challa were fighting for the throne. And T'Challa had him on the chair. He's like, yield. Your people need you. Yield. Your people need you. And that's Shuri, what says, Shuri said that to Namor. And Namor basically realized, yeah, I, I, I can't. But he yielded. And next you know, next scene, the little flying wasp ship. Namor tells his people, we're done here. We're good. We're done. Stop fighting. Go home. And then Shuri goes. Oh, sorry. Ebon back. Everybody's like, Ebon back. Ebon back. Ebon back. Don't play into us. Essentially, that's what the end of the movie is. And like, Riri goes back home. She can't take the suit with her, obviously. Riri's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Tenley. She's a queen. I mean, she's a princess right now. I don't think she wants a mantle of queen because it also cuts before the credits kick in. I don't know. There's two parts of this. Credits kick in and it's basically M'Baku saying, I'm fighting for the throne. And then we cut to going to Haiti. Shuri goes to Haiti to meet with Nakia. She went back home. They do the ritual that uh, Shuri didn't want to do originally. But Sherry wants to do it by herself before she did stop doing it with Nakia. The whole linen, white linen, put in the flame, and you just get a whole montage of Chadwick Bozeman just all going off on the screen. Sherry starts bawling her eyes out, which actually I get it. Then the movie cuts. And yes, there's an extra credit scene. Then we keep moving, wait about almost like 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds. We cut back to that same exact sequence of Sherry being on the beach with the flames. We see Nakia walking with the little boy. Like, huh, okay. And then, oh, hello, little boy, was he? And Nakia was like, this is your Auntie Sherry. And Sherry's like, wait, what, what, what the hell you just said to me, girl? So I'm like, oh, sh oh, she didn't know. Oh, okay. And then... I was like, damn. She, you could have at least told her. But well, she kind of did. And then she was like, did my mother know? Did my mother meet him? Yeah, she met him. She's met him before. And basically, Nakia explains to Shuri that obviously T'Challa knew that she was pregnant. They had a child. T'Challa knew, knew of his son. It was like, he wanted him, which by the way, his name is Toussaint. His Haitian name or English name so to speak is Tucson and basically Nakia like I said is paid to Sherry we want to keep him far, as far away from the throne as possible without the, like just the force we have trying to be king and all that stuff we wanted to have a normal childhood and obviously T'Challa went back and forth visiting them and stuff like that while doing his kingly duties before he died and then the child also broke down his death to him. It was like, Dad talked to us about him dying, right? And he was like, yeah, he did. So, so he knew what was going to happen and stuff like that. Dad, he knew the child was going to die, be strong for his mother, stuff like that. And then uh, Tucson, the little, little man, is like, my mom said you can keep secrets. Is that true? She's like, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then the little man's like, well, Tucson's my Haitian name. And then Sherry's like, wait, what? Then she talks in Wakandan. Or African. She's like, she's like, who are you? 
I'm Prince T'Challa, son of King T'Challa. Cut. And he was said Black Panther will be back. And that's it. <coughs> great movie, great story. I love the little love triangle thing. Not triangle, but love thing with Namor and Sherry. It was a good movie. I really believe they did a great job with it. I'm glad they did a great job with it. It, it meant it needed to feel like Chadwick was gone, but he was still there in spirit and stuff like that. They did an awesome job with it, and I loved it. 8 out of 10, always and forever. Y'all know where to hit me up. I got a page on Facebook now, the Mellow Podcast page. Check me out there, always and forever. Twitch.tv slash Mellow Fellow Gaming. W.GG. Hit that 10%. Get a tub. Get 10% off. They're all delicious flavors. Everybody's each their own. Help that YouTube with MFG22. Always and forever. One love. Peace.